Vessels of Honor, Pure Hearts. Hi everyone, um, thank you for joining me. Um, today I just wanted to keep the, the message simple. Um, going back to just the basic teachings, the basic fundamentals, that which keeps us grounded and reminds us um, of what really matters in our walk with God. The promises are beautiful, the blessings and everything. But when we lose the pure, the purity of heart, we've lost everything. Amen. Um, for the, for the pure heart, we'll see the Lord. Amen. Yes. Yeah, so I, I wanted us to share a bit on the pure heart, the purity of the heart journey because that is exactly what will get us to heaven. Amen. Even if we never attain any other success in life, even if God never gives us one more blessing, but if we can just get our purity walk right, then at least we know that uh, we've done our bit. We've done our bit in terms of working out our own salvation. The Bible said, walk out your salvation. Um, the, the, our salvation has been bought by Jesus, but he did say that we must walk out our salvation. And we know very well that Jesus Christ being on the cross by itself is not enough to get us to heaven. Jesus is not going to force us to submit ourselves to him. He's not going to force us to circumcise our hearts to him. That is a decision that we need to make. Amen. I've got some notes. Okay. So a, a pure heart, it's a heart that is free of offense. There are people who just walk around with the spirit of offense. They are just ready to be offended. Sometimes it's just a matter of telling yourself that I will not be offended because you yourself offend others. Sometimes we need to remember to extend mercy unto other people because we ourselves are not perfect. I believe the day, <clears throat> excuse me, the day we expect perfection from others must be the day we are able to put perfection on the table. But if we cannot do that, it's just, it's just not fair. So let us have that uh, that mercy let us have that mercy let us give people extra rope to make mistakes let's give people extra rope to to um people 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 make mistakes because people are people the same way as you make mistakes because you are you let us start by extending that mercy and stop thinking that everything is deliberate. And stop thinking that everything is done on purpose. Because you do not know where does that stem from. Is it a trigger from the past, from your childhood, from a bad relationship? Like, you do not know what, what, what triggers that. Rather, let us walk on what triggers us. And not walk around with our hearts on our sleeves. Because people will wrong us. That's why the Bible said you shall forgive, you shall forgive seven times what? Seven times seventy-seven. What? You said seven times seven. Guys, forgive me. Yeah, all I know. I think the reason I, I never really even memorized that part of scripture was because I told myself that I should never ever get to a point where I can count how many times I've forgiven a person. Okay? But the number that the Lord has given is significantly higher. Like for someone to be able to reach that, I mean, that, that person will be very gifted. I mean, I, I've been married before, okay? And my ex-husband has not been able to, to reach that. And the Bible says that per day, okay? Um, yeah. If, if he ever comes across this, uh, this video, it's, it's, yeah, I'm not, it's, it's, yeah. In, in, I'm saying all that in, in good intentions, you know. I'm just saying as a person, even in a marriage, you, you easily step on each other's toes, but no one, no one, no one can, 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 uh, can be able to, 
to offend you that many times okay and we need to have that heart of offering another person's grace and a pure heart as naturally forgives and how do we even pray i mean already with the with with the way we pray part of prayer is asking for forgiveness living a life of repentance how do I begin to ask the Lord to forgive me if I cannot forgive another person? Like, that's a joke. That's a joke, you guys. So a pure heart also is inclusive of a heart that forgives. A heart that gives, a heart that gives many chances because we ourselves need to be forgiven. Therefore, we forgive others. Amen? Um, a pure heart... A pure heart is free of strife. You know, you know, there's people who just cause strife. You know, there are people who just easily cause strife. And I just feel like it's, it's good when you're able to identify when a fire starts and you can at least try to put it out or remove yourself from your, from the, from the situation. Amen. Because strife, strife is not good. And the Lord does not, does not excuse that. You know, there are little things that, there are things we call little, you know, things like gossip. But gossipers will not make it to heaven because the Lord does not appreciate that the Lord does not like it. You know, I teach my children this way. I just say to them, imagine being in heaven and you hear people whispering at the back, talking. You won't think they're planning a surprise. You think they're gossiping if God allowed gossipers. But in heaven... When you hear people whispering, you either you think they're praying very low, don't want to disturb other people's peace, or they are planning a surprise or a prank. And how beautiful is that to be in an environment where you don't have to fear that people could attack, could attack you with their words or with their actions. Amen. So now, a pure heart helps us to stop taking things personally, even taking persecution seriously. You know, sometimes you can just take things too far. You know, you have to understand that some people just don't like you because they're just people who just don't like people in general. And besides that, not everyone will like you. Not everyone will gel with you. Not everyone is for you. Not everyone belongs in your tribe, okay? Even as you are, there are Christians you feel, okay, I relate better with this one. Do you understand? Because it, it's because of the kind of a person that you are. The reason God has called such different people onto this platform is because the Lord wanted to reach out to different people. So th that's another thing that makes it hard when the Lord calls you to the platform, okay? When the Lord calls you to the platform to open a YouTube channel, the first thing that comes, like, but Lord, it's already flooded. I don't see why I should come. It's like I'm a drop in the sea. But there's something in your voice. It's in your voice. It's in your personality. It's in your gift. It's in the way you present the matter. It's in the way you speak. It's in the way you, you are able to interpret the matter. The Lord can present the same thing to a same group of people. But it's amazing. It how different we'll explain it. It how different we will break it down because of our different giftings, personalities, and uniqueness. And God did that on purpose because there's different kinds of people and God made us make sense. So when God called me to this platform, I had that bit of a barrier that it's already full. I don't know why the Lord wants me to go... Uh, and, and be in the mix, especially when I'm happy being background to the background wall, okay? Yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. In everything that the Lord calls you to, there is a level of grace. There is a level of anointing. There is a level of protection. So with whatever persecution, with whatever testing, with whatever spiritual warfare that will come. You are able to stand boldly and know that you'll make it because it is God that has called you to the platform. And that is the power that, and the confidence and the boldness that comes from being in the will of God. 
from being where God wants you to be. It's one thing to be where God wants you to be and another to be where God wants you to be doing what God said you must do. Amen. So it's amazing how we want to use our own creativity to get ourselves into things. And then when we get into trouble, then we'll be crying out for God to come and help us. Amen. So let us stick to, the, to God's blueprint. Let us stick to God's blueprint. So what the Lord has called you to, there's protection there. For God who, for those whom God has moved you to a place, it doesn't matter what you face. It doesn't matter what comes against you. You'll always know, have that peace that I'm here because God called me here. The Lord allowed me here. It was granted by the Lord that I be here and no one can contest it. No human being, no demon, no demon in hell can contest that. And there's nothing like that boldness. The same way with the kingdom marriages that are coming. No matter what will come against that marriage, just to know that this is a person whom God ordained for me. It gives you the courage and the boldness to stand before God and be able to pray and stand for that marriage because you know it was ordained by God and not a figment of your own imagination or another part or another, another dream of yours. Amen. This is not a dream that you manufactured. This is, this is the, the call of God. This is the purpose. You put down your goals aside, your dreams aside, your plans aside, and said, Father, I will follow your will. Many of us were surprised to learn that God has got so much, that, that God, God has got so much for us, so much is embodied in our purpose and assignment, so much that it involves our partner, rocket science. We should have known that, isn't it? We should know how important you, the the left the lifetime partner you choose is because that person will directly impact your calling your purpose your assignment your destiny oh my god your destiny your destiny destiny and purpose should be preached more than any other thing more than any other thing because under that that's where marriage comes in that's where other things come in amen I remember one pastor once said, do not get married until you know what is your purpose. And I remember thinking, well, I don't know. Some of us might have to wait for a long time because we, we don't really know like what it is, uh, what it is we think God has called us to. All that it meant to us, then it means it's just not your time to get married. And it makes sense. It makes sense. As you get married, you're a help meet, but a help meet to who? Are you compatible? Your compatibility comes, your, comp your compatibility is deeper than your personalities. It is deeper than your Christian walk with God. Well, we're both Christians. It, it has to do with purpose. It has to do with destiny, the direction where you're both headed. Okay? Marriages that are ordained of the Lord are, are blessed marriages. In a God-ordained marriage, a power, another partner will not shadow the talents, the giftings, the callings, or the purpose, or the anointing that is on the other person. The one that God has for you will not be intimidated by the hand of God upon your life. The one that God has for you will not be jealous as the, oil of the, as, the, as the oil of God drips from your head. They will want to commune with you and be one with you and grow with you. That should make them connect more to God and not envy you and not compete with you or try to, uh, or try to push you to the back or try to dim your light. And you do not want to be with a person that makes you feel that you must play down your talents. When you do this, they feel intimidated. So now, 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 now what? Now you have a, 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 now you have two personalities. Now you hide your talents. Now you are this way when this person is around. When they're not, you are this way. It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. Amen. So let us go back 
to a pure heart. A pure heart is a heart that, that easily forgives, understanding that people, people need our mercy. People will wrong you. Let us start the day understanding people will wrong us. People will wrong us. There are things that are very much forgivable. People will wrong us. Let us give them space. Let us give them grace. Let us give them kindness. Let us give them extra ropes to wrong us. Starting the day, knowing that you've given them that room, should they offend you, then you say, it's okay, and you just let it roll. You teach yourself to let it roll up until it becomes second nature. People will wrong you. It's not if. It's when. Give people grace. Give people grace. You will see the importance of forgiveness when you get married. For those of you who've never been married, whether you've been in a good or bad marriage, you'll always learn. There are things that, 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 that are there that you'll learn. There's nothing that brings out or that requires the fruits of the spirits to come out than in a marriage. That's when you will know that this person is selfish and marriage is not for selfish people. If there's anyone who thinks they are getting married for someone else to serve their needs, to make them happy, to make them this, anything that is centered on one person, just know that that marriage is not going to work. Marriage is hard work. It takes more than two people to carry it. It cannot be done by one person. A, one person can only fast for so much and for so long. They can only pray for so much and so long, up until the Lord decides to break the cord. Amen? So, let us go back to the purity of heart. To the purity of heart. We learn to live, to forgive. As children growing in our father's in our father's house, in our mother's house, we learn to forgive our siblings. We learn to live in forgiveness as we go to school, as we interact with people. We understand that people are not perfect. We're supposed to understand the concept of forgiveness more than anything. Forgiveness helps us to avoid strife. Unless you're able to understand that this person is toxic and I need to cut them out of my life then that's just another thing. But then again, with that, we exercise wisdom. Let us go back to purity of heart. To make it in marriage, you need to be able to forgive. You need to be able to forgive. Anyone who's in close proximity with you has got a higher potential to annoy you, to irritate you, and to touch buttons that are least, are hardly ever touched by people. So as you get married, you'll have a chance to grow your, the, the fruits of the Spirit. And you'll get to, just as much as children help to bring out some of the fruits of the Spirit, watch what your partner will do. Watch. And we also need to be reasonable, you guys. As much as you're talking kingdom spouse this, kingdom spouse that, after all the woes and the woes and everything else, it's life its life then fruits of the spirit needs to come into play fruits of the spirits need to come into play back to forgiveness he doesn't come alone he's got in-laws have that heart have that heart already start start the journey with ropes and ropes and ropes that are ready to give to each and every single member of his family each and every friend that he has and give them space to wrong you. They will say something insensitive. They might say something to make you angry. You need to learn to forgive. You need to learn to forgive. Guys, life has got no problem teaching you the same thing over and over again until you finally learn. That's just how it works. So forgiveness is very important and it's one of the things you're going to have to learn very, very fast. You have to learn to forgive. You have to learn to forgive. And th your partner is the best person who, who, who's going to, um, to teach you that. Because right now you, 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 um, you're, right now you are in a, in, a, in a love zone, okay? So 
as as you get with your partner and you get to know each other and everything is beautiful and rosy and then you get into holy matrimony and then real life be, real life begins we need to be realistic when i was a child i thought like a child i reasoned like a child but now that i've become a man that's what the bible says now that i've become a man then you need to start thinking your thoughts you need to start changing your thoughts then we need to start working life together and understand that this is a human being this is a human being yes this person has been through the fire been through this being through that but but they're still human even you as you are you've been through the fiery furnace and all of that but you still have flaws and part of real love is to love a person with their flaws otherwise it is not real love at all amen so marriage marriage has got those beautiful benefits it teaches you to forgive and you know the the person will try you the person will try you you'll be like i can't believe you you you, you want to pull you you want to pull out a not your hair but someone's hair like it'll like you will get angry <laughs> you will get angry and you will remember the scriptures do not go to bed angry you will remember this you will remember them scriptures i did it was as if the devil was dangling them in front of me like what you gonna do what you gonna do it was serious okay and there will always be difficult people there will always be difficult in-laws um i had a particular in-law that i will not say by name that woman oh my god that woman i remember saying to the lord i can't believe she's a christian she's literally disguising under being called a christian nothing in her heart displays love everything about her is not real i was like god this god that i was making guys instead of addressing the problem and saying god i have a problem with this woman i have a problem with this woman please help me when she sees me she just wants to attack me help me and every time i would hear her voice i would cringe my heart my blood would boil and i remember thinking this is not like me this is not like me like that's the thing you're going to be in situations you've never been before and then emotions you've never felt before will will, will, will start to to arise and start to boil and then you need to surrender everything to god and i didn't know how to handle the situation until i decided you know what i've done everything but now the one thing i haven't done is to try and address this emotion directly so every time i would hear her voice and i'd cringe i would pray and i say lord free me from this lord free me from this. help me release this woman and every time um, i'd be in a place and i would hear her voice and my heart would boil and i would say lord release me lord release me from this release me from this okay release me from this because i do not know what it is was it now hate was it now unforgiveness like what what there was a stronghold there was understand you need to keep your heart pure i ref, i refused that they be that that woman i've been able to live my life cleaning out my heart all this time and now i'm married and here is this woman i was like i'm not gonna miss eternity because of this person and i kept on praying until one day um i was just in i was just at home watching tv and then i heard my ex-husband said oh yeah it's so and so she says hi and i looked at him was like oh say hi say hi you know without cringing without boiling and after i said that i was like me moi her she i just said that and i did not boil i did not cringe i did not have to reach to the deepest uh, to the deepest part of my no i was like oh wow the lord freed me the lord freed me I understand the different kinds of strongholds I understand the different kinds of strongholds fight above all else to keep your heart pure fight fight I understand where the strife is coming from understand where the anger is coming from understand where the hate is coming from and deal with that person understand 
who is it attached to it's okay to just sit we as women we're good at this we're good with dealing with our emotions um because we care about inner healing we don't just care about outer beauty we care about inner beauty inner beauty um being cleansed all of that so we give ourselves time and guys should learn this from us so sit down take a pen follow the dots where is it leading to is it a situation where where is it leading to you you better deal with it you better do all you can do your utmost best to keep your heart pure keep your heart pure you may look like a fool to other people but you know you know in your heart that you will go to heaven because the lord requires that your heart be clean you cannot say well the lord has died on the cross for me that's enough come on guys come on guys and i believe that a lot of us have grown in the lord so much that we hear the lord even more clearly and understand what he requires of us and we understand the responsibility and the part that we have to play that there are things we cannot entertain there are definitely not things we cannot entertain we cannot be living around with the with the heart that is not pure with the heart that is not clean a heart that's got envy a heart that's got jealousy um a heart that entertains gossip guys all of these the lord has stated in the bible that those who live this way they will not see the kingdom of heaven we expect god to speak about the adulterers the idolaters the the murderers the drunkards the 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 prostitutes you know those obvious sins that's what we expect but then we do not look it's like a couple living together it's like a bitter woman you know it's like a bitter woman when when you are um in a marriage and you realize that the husband is cheating and he's not stopping over time it starts to become what it starts to be to to become bitterness it starts to become bitterness guys the lord everyone 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 will reap what they sow you are not a fool or rather be a fool for Christ. Don't be a fool for love, but be a fool for Christ. If you're going to be a fool for love, be a fool for agape love, God's love. And God will surely reward you. God will surely reward you. Time and time again, God will protect you. God will cover you. God will deal with those who try to deal with you. Watch God humiliate those who try to humiliate you. God will give you the honor and the grace to see how he disciplines some of the people who try to come against you. Watch them. Watch them as they're humiliated. Humiliated, trying to come against you. And the Lord will grant you the grace to sometimes see. To sometimes see as he punishes them. As he puts them, as he puts them in line. For someone else in a marriage which is not healthy. My advice is I can only lead you to pray. Only only the Lord can tell you what you need to do. Only God can lead you. In fact, it should be the Lord that directs you because where God's because where God's leading is, you can at least know that his presence is there because the Lord goes before us to clear the way. Do you understand? So where God's where, where God's leading is, that's where God's protection is. So if God is saying stay, that's where the protection is and that's where God expects you to stand. Okay, you have to understand that not all uh, people who are in toxic relationships are with people who are not their God ordained, uh, God ordained partners. Okay, I don't, I do not really want to say too much on that, but all I can say is let us keep the heart pure. Let us keep the heart pure. Yes, the the husband could be doing this. Let's say it's the husband that is cheating. Yes, should he die before he repents, he's going straight to hell. Yes, should she die before she repents, she's shooting down to hell. This is our belief as Christians, isn't it? This is our belief. It is what helps us to keep, to keep that integrity. Now, no one wants to be anyone's fool. That is why we trust in God who is righteous and God will do right by us 
you need to do right by by yourself as a person you can't say that because this person is doing wrong i'm also gonna do wrong you know so what so you do not care about your destiny anymore so now that you married has your husband become your god has your wife become your god your destiny doesn't matter god doesn't matter god's will in this doesn't matter God doesn't have to have a say in this anymore. What does that mean for you? So guys, it all goes back to our hearts. Let us keep our hearts pure. Let us keep our hearts pure. Sometimes it's a matter of you checking the environment you are in. Sometimes it is possible. Perhaps, let's say you are just a young adult living with family members. Maybe it's a matter of you moving from that place to another just to keep your heart pure because it involves your destiny. It involves your destiny. Let us keep our heart pure and do all we can to keep our hearts pure. In anything, do not rush. Like I said, God's protection is where his guidance is, where his instruction is. If God wants you at point A, you should be at point A and remain there. If God wants you at point B, you should remain there. Even if you feel you've overgrown the place and you're ready for C, it is not for you to decide. God is still God. Let God be God and every man a liar. Amen. So let us go back to a pure heart, free of offense. Let us go back to forgiveness. Let us stop wearing our hearts on our sleeves. Let us let go of the spirit of offense. Let us let go of strife. Let us stop taking things personally, not even persecutions from other people. Thank you guys. Love you. God bless.